the whole family got to go to Chicago. Like, you know, like the Tejada, like Kane, Braden, Tariq, and like Effie. Right. Like the if we old, just had to go Diana, re up or yeah, something. Do like, something. Right, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Like, just take a look. Now, how does Tariq plan on winning this war with or without the help of the Tejadas, Braden, and Effie? What's the end game for his relationship with Braden? And could Tariq end season 4 being on the run, where he then potentially ends up in Chicago to kickstart this new chapter, this new power show with Tommy Egan after 4 season 3? That's the topic of discussion in today's breakdown as we look at Tariq's chessboard. We're going to look at a few different perspectives of how Tariq can tackle this situation with Noma in terms of his relationship with the Tahadas and why Anya Covington will play a huge role in the outcome for Noma. So, the focus will be on Tariq, the Tahadas, and Anya Covington, as well as Tariq's relationship with Brayden. But also something that could also come back to haunt Tariq that could actually lead Tariq to potentially having to flee New York, where he then links up with Tommy Egan after we see the conclusion of All Things Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4. Now first things first, when it comes to this situation in terms of bringing down Noma, Tariq created a plan where all of them would play their positions after Moni and Tariq decided to fake their deaths, a move that we should now all be familiar with in the world of power. Tommy faked his death towards the end of season 1 of Ghost, and there's been countless of other examples across power, and also raising Kanan with Unique coming back from the dead. But in regards to Tariq's plan, Tariq was going to deal with Detective Carter, Davis was going to keep Nomar occupied, while Moni and the Tohadas would deal with Noma after the reception. They couldn't strike straight away because of the wedding celebrations. There were way too many witnesses, bodyguards, and security. Of course, Tariq now finds himself holding Carter captive, but that was after Detective Carter warned Noma who went and got rid of Bonet. So, while Tariq's here holding Detective Carter at gunpoint, he actually has no idea what's happened with Monet and the Tohadas. But, you would have to assume at some point in episode 10, Tariq will learn about Monet's death which is definitely going to be a bit of a shock. He is used to losing people around him, don't get it twisted, he's lost a lot of people. But Monet is someone who Tariq actually had a fairly okay relationship with. She was always kind of straightforward with Tariq, confronted him directly whenever they had any issues, and even though they had their ups and downs across the last few seasons, she's the only one that kind of really had trust in Tariq, he was her thinker. Tariq is also the only character to never do Monet wrong, he's the only one who hadn't really gone behind her back. So. First we need to see this reaction to finding out Monet has been taken off the chessboard. Will it be Diana who kind of calls him and confides in him? Will he hear it from Davis McLean? Could he be invited to the Tohadas, where they all sit around the table to come up with a plan just like the Tohadas did after Lorenzo's death? Because I do think they do need Tariq. Monet is dead because of you! Every time y'all do some shit and leave me out, it gets fucked up! Now, over the last few days, we've been talking about how the Tohadas will definitely have a small conflict before they kind of come together. Kane will be thinking maybe if they hadn't kept him out the loop in terms of bringing down Noma, then it wouldn't have gone down the way it did. Maybe Monet would still be alive. On the flip side, if they did tell Kane what they were kind of doing, would Kane have allowed the Tohadas to go through with the plan considering he was marrying Noma and set to take a higher position in her operation? So he thought, I'm more inclined to agree with what Monet said. Noma would never have seen Kane as an equal. No one was just using him for a passport, and when she had no further use for him, she would have got rid of him just like she did with Obi. Of course, it is a hypothetical, and we'll never really know the answer for sure. But, going forward, the Tohadas do need to put aside their differences, or any beef that they have, and look at the bigger picture. And that also includes any issues with Tariq, because he will be questioning Diana at some point. What was she thinking? So, we already know Diane is going to be making a very questionable move that puts herself in danger or puts the others at risk as well. Now we do also have to ask the question, will the Tohadas and Tariq be on the same page? We know when Monet was around, they were, because Monet and Tariq were kind of on the same wavelength and she always used to go to Tariq for the plan. Again, at times, he was the brains. I don't know your big brain got a plan, so let's hear it. But with Monet no longer in the picture, who takes the lead? Is it Drew, Diana or Kane who creates the plan? I think their end goal definitely do align in terms of getting rid of both Detective Carter and Noma. But if they do come together to kind of devise a plan, how do they go about creating one? Kane and Tariq have never seen eye to eye. The Tahadas may want to do it one way, but Tariq may not agree and he kind of may want to do it another way. The other problem is a lot of emotions will be involved in these decisions because of Monet's death. But just like Davis McLean said to Tariq in 409, they have to keep their emotions in check 
Take a step back and just think for a moment. Take a look at the chessboard, think three moves ahead. Plan properly, and this time, execute it properly. Not like Tariq did at St. Michael's Church. So, how do they target someone like Noma? How do you bring Noma out of her comfort zone, where she's being protected by dozens of bodyguards in a mansion? I think the answer might be Anya Covington. But, just before we discuss Anya Covington, I do want to run it back to something we saw in Raising Canaan, and how we could actually see something very similar play out in Go Season 4 Episode 10, and it revolves around Kanan's fake kidnapping move with Ronnie Mathis. Towards the end of Raising Kane in Season 3, we saw Kanan faking his uh, kidnapping, which lured Rock, Marvin, and Detective Howard to this warehouse, where he then turned the tables on Ronnie himself. He knew the moment Rock found out that he'd been kidnapped, she was going to do everything in her power to go and rescue her son, as any other parent would do in power. Another example is Tariq's kidnapping in power, which was actually a parallel to Kanan's, a fake kidnapping. But we saw how Tasha, Ghost, and Tommy did everything in their power to get Tariq back. So, just coming back to Power Book 2 Ghost, could they kidnap Anya Covington? Is that how they plan to lure Nomara out of wherever she's hiding, and out of her comfort zone to more of a level playing field? They do have to make it more of a level playing field because of the sheer numbers and bodies that Noma has at her disposal. They can't target her at her home or this mansion, because you're going to be going to a place which is heavily guarded. So, targeting Noma's biggest weakness, which is Anya Covington, has to be something that the Tahadas do think about. However, will Tariq be on board with this plan, if that is what the Tahadas are kind of thinking? Because we do see Tariq and Anya running out of what kind of looks like a abandoned rundown kind of building. It could be a plan that he might not agree with. From the Tahadas' point of view, they may think, anybody is fair game after Noma and her brother kill Monet. An eye for an eye. You took our mother away, so we're going to target your daughter. But, Tariq may know what Anya caught up in this mess, just like he didn't want Lauren to be in season 2, which is why he could potentially be helping her. So, that's just a thought. However it plays out between the Tahadas, Tariq and Noma, I do think Anya Covington will be in the middle of this war, because of who she is, and how she's a weak spot that they can target, to lure Noma out of her comfort zone, and in essence, into a battle zone. Now just moving on to Tariq and Brayden, where are we with their relationship at this moment in time? There's no doubt that both of them have a lot of love for each other. There's also no doubt that both have stayed loyal to each other, even though we have kind of questioned Tariq at times. Over the last two episodes, he has been there when Elle was in hospital, and he was also there to have Brayden's back when they went to Steve's apartment. We're also going to see Brayden having Tariq's back again in episode 10, when he comes behind Carter, where it seems like Carter has a jump on Tariq. However, there is a part of the synopsis which we still haven't seen play out to its uh, full conclusion, and that particular part reads, When Brayden starts flirting with a new, reckless lifestyle, Tariq wonders if there's really room for two at the top. Now that's something we still haven't kind of seen play out to its full conclusion just yet. So, we've seen Tariq kind of warning Brayden across season 4, mainly in part 2, about him getting high on his own supply. He specifically told him in 409, don't take any product, because he needs his mind to be clear, and because he needed him to focus. But, what did we go and see Brayden do while they were at the church? We saw him taking yet another bump. What he doesn't know, won't hurt him. What Tariq doesn't know, won't hurt. Except in episode 10, I do wonder if Tariq begins to question his relationship with Brayden, because having someone by his side who's constantly high, not listening, acting crazy like what he did by ramming into the side of Detective Carter's car, because it really was a crazy move. A move that could have easily have backfired. So, I do wonder if Brayden kind of continues to get high in episode 10, and will that make Tariq wonder, I love you Brayden, like a brother, but at this moment in time, you're way too reckless, you're not thinking straight, and you're too much of a liability. Or, Brayden goes and makes yet another crazy daring move. Is that when Tariq begins to consider cutting ties with Brayden Weston? We do have to keep that in the back of our minds because of what they did tease in the synopsis, where Tariq will consider whether there's room for two at the top of the food chain. You can only assume that Tariq will be wondering what he said to Davis in 409, I can only trust myself. So, along with this move with Noma and Anya Covington, let's keep our eyes on how they end this relationship with Brayden Weston, especially because Gianni has said over and over again in countless of interviews, after season 4, he is looking to move on to other projects, and his time playing Brayden Weston is officially over. I know the actors do tease all the time, and they are kind of known to throw us down the wrong direction, but I have watched countless of interviews from Gianni, as well as a couple of lives that he's done on TikTok, and he has said it with conviction and also stayed very consistent, in terms of him saying he's done with his character Brayden Weston going forward. So, to weaken Brayden's relationship, let's see how they end things. 
I personally think here would be Tariq going off on his own, which kind of brings us nicely on to Tariq potentially being on the run at the end of season 4, and also linking up with Tommy in 4 season 3 in Chicago. Now, when Tariq thinks that they've finally come out the other end where they've won this war, with both Detective Carter and Nomar being taken off the chessboard, which I do kind of expect them to do, but when he feels like things are just settling down, he graduates and gets back to Tasha. He's finally got a hold of the CCTV footage of him killing Zion and destroyed it. Is that when something like Salim's body comes back around to finally haunt him as a final twist to the tale? This is a small plot hole that I do wish they come back around to, them tying this murder back to Tariq St. Patrick and him realising the only way out is to get out of New York and run. Maybe even with the help of Rashad Tate, if he delivers the info on Detective Carter being the one behind Kamal Tate's death. We all know it's always a favour for a favour with Tate and Tariq, so maybe there's just kind of one last moment between them, who knows. But could the final scene be kind of Tariq driving his car down the highway where we see the sign to Chicago? Because I do think Tariq will pop up at the end of 4 season 3. I do think it is all set up for Tariq and Tommy to unite for whatever the next power show is. So is that how they could potentially end Go season 4, Tariq being on the run? where we're just kind of um, waiting in anticipation for him to pop up in Chicago. Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section in regards to them using Anya Covington to target Noma, Tariq's relationship with Brayden, and also Tariq potentially ending season 4 on the way to Tommy Egan. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.